What's going on guys? Welcome back to Traffish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about silicone. And the reason I want to talk about silicone is I see a lot of miscommunication and misinformation given on the internet about which ones you can use. I'm in a lot of fish groups and I see people asking all the time, what silicone can I use to reseal an aquarium and what silicone can I use to build an aquarium? And depending on the size of the aquarium and the application and the silicone you have, it may or may not work. So I want to talk to you guys about it a little bit to try and clear some things up and hopefully get you guys set on the path to enjoying the hobby even more. So basically what I want to talk about is one of the things that I see a lot said is 100% silicone is 100% silicone. They're interchangeable. You can use whatever as long as it's 100% silicone. And that is half true. So. 100% silicone comes in many different forms, so you want to be sure that what you're using is aquarium safe. And what I mean by aquarium safe is it does not have any mold inhibitors or any added chemicals to prevent stuff from growing on the silicone. So the best example I can use is GE1 and GE2 silicone. GE1 silicone does not have any mold inhibitors, it is 100% silicone, and GE2 has mold inhibitors in it. You cannot use GE2 in an aquarium. It will kill your fish. Do not use it. GE1 is the way to go in this case. So not all 100% silicones are created equal um, with the mold inhibitors. In addition to, um, if you have multiple different silicones that don't have mold, uh, mold inhibitors in them, they all could have different tensile strengths. And that is going to be the overall industrial strength of the silicone after it's been cured and the amount of pressure that it takes to break that silicone. So I'm going to talk about those in a little bit um, and talk about what applications different silicones can be used for. The other thing that we need to talk about is what applications of the silicone you're going to be using. Is it going to be for building an aquarium or is it just going to be for the repair and reseal of an aquarium? Generally speaking, a lower grade silicone like the GE1 silicone is going to be perfectly fine for resealing aquariums up to 75 gallons. I personally have used it in aquariums up to 150 gallons with good success. Um, but for the average fish keeper, 75 gallons and less, probably going to be your better bet for your GE1 silicone. Um, specifically for if there aren't any major repairs that need to be done. If the seams are in good condition, GE1 is going to work perfectly fine. If there's minor flaws in the seams, GE1 could potentially still work, but if the seams are coming apart, you're either going to want to use a slightly stronger silicone or you're going to want to rebuild that aquarium. So when I'm talking about seams and seals, what I mean is the seam of an aquarium is where the one glass panel meets the other one. So if the one panel of glass is like this and the one's like this, where they meet, the silicone in between those surfaces is the seam of the aquarium. And the edge that runs down the inside corner of that seam is your seal. And the seals don't necessarily have as much structural integrity as the seams do. The seams are basically what holds your aquarium together. The seals are there to help protect the seams from anything inside the tank, the substrate, the fish, the decor, anything like that. So based on that, if the aquarium is relatively small, like on my DIY aquarium, if you guys watch that video, GE1 silicone is going to be perfectly fine for building small aquariums. However, when you get into larger volumes of water, you're going to want a silicone that has a larger tensile strength to be able to handle the volume and pressure that the water is putting out on the glass so that it has a better chance of surviving the pressures. So that all being said, I want to talk about some different silicones with you guys. So the first silicone that we've already been talking about is GE1 silicone. GE1 silicone can be found at almost any hardware store, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, any mom and pop shop, they're pretty much all going to carry GE1 because it is a window and door silicone, it's a general DIY silicone, general homeowner use silicone. It's very popular, very widespread, and very easy to find. 
and because of that, it's very cheap. A tube of GE1 silicone is about $5, and the tensile strength on this silicone is about 200 PSI. Now, 200 PSI seems like it's quite a bit, and that is for the cured silicone, but when we talk about some of these other silicones, 200 is not really going to seem like it's that much. Um, so, GE1 silicone is really good to use. I use it in a lot of my reseals and some of my smaller builds. Um, it's perfectly safe to use in the aquarium, even though on the back of the tube, right here, it says not for underwater or aquarium use. And the reason they put that on there is a legality issue where they don't want to get sued. So basically, if you use this silicone in your aquarium and you do a poor job, and the aquarium explodes all over your house because the silicone was not meant to be used under the water, because they said that it wasn't supposed to be, you can't go after them and try to sue them because their product didn't protect your house. And it's basically there just to cover their butts. This works perfectly fine in the aquarium. They only have that on there to protect themselves. And it's understandable because not everybody has the same um, ability to make repairs as everybody else, so they have no way of uh, determining workmanship, right? So they put that on there to protect themselves. This is perfectly fine. I use it in a lot of stuff. The next one I want to talk about is going to be a little bit stronger. It's going to be better for building aquariums, and it's going to be better for resealing larger aquariums. And that is the Momentum RTV series of silicones, specifically 103 and 108, which is the black and clear silicones. Um, those are a much better silicone, as it's not a sealant, like the GE1 is just a sealant. The, all these other silicones I'm going to talk about are adhesives, so they're a much stronger silicone. Um, the Momentum RTVs, 108 and 103, have a tensile strength of 400 PSI, so double what the GE1 is. Now, coming with that double strength comes with a much steeper price. Um, these tubes run anywhere between $20 to $22 online. They are not cheap, right? So it can be a little expensive, so make sure if you want to do a project on this, you save up the money for the silicone because the silicone is not cheap. It's quite expensive. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the GE SCS 1200. Now this was my choice of silicone when it came to doing the 300 gallon aquarium and I will explain why. Uh, based on this picture you see here, uh, this silicone has a tensile strength of 480 PSI, so it's even more much stronger than the RTV 103 and 108. So, um, and the price point is only 15 bucks. Now, when I was looking at these silicones, I was really comparing these two um, because from all the reading I was doing is a lot of larger aquarium manufacturers mainly use the RTV 108 and the GE SCS 1200 to build large aquariums like 700, 800, 900,000 gallon aquariums. This is what they use. And um, that was kind of appealing to me because I'm building a 300 gallon aquarium with a plywood bottom. I want something nice and strong that's going to hold everything together. So that's why I went with this. And at a price point of about $15 online, it was a little better than the $22 price point of the uh, RTV 108. So I went ahead and chose this. Now, had I done a little bit more research, I would have found our next silicone, which is the ASI Aquarium Sealant. Um, which is only $9 for a tube of silicone, but it has a tensile strength of 520 PSI. So it's not enormously stronger than the SCS 1200, but the price point is lower. So after I found that, I was kind of like, oh man, I should have got that instead of this, but I'm still happy with this. I actually think I looked at this stuff uh, while I was determining to get this and I couldn't find anywhere that would ship it to me cheaper Than what I was getting this for which is why I went with this but This silicone is going to be a little harder to find and the reason for that is Because this is an aquarium specific silicone and is made for aquariums um, So 
if your local fish store doesn't sell it, you have to order it online because nobody is going to just carry this, right? Where all these other ones I've talked about are a general construction um, silicone and a general repair silicone, so they're much more likely to be found on the shelves in stores. So ASI silicone, very strong, very affordable, good stuff. It says right on the tube for aquariums up to, it's either 700 or 750 gallons. So you know you can use this silicone to build big aquariums. So really good stuff. So those are the silicones that I would basically choose for my aquarium applications. You got the GE1, the RTVs, the SCS1200, and the ASI silicone. Um, now, there is one silicone that I was trying to find information on, and I could not find any information on it, and I was really surprised that I couldn't. And that is the Aquion Aquarium Silicone. And all of these other silicones that I looked at had technical data sheets where they tell you how strong they are, how much flex all the silicones have, uh, what the tensile strengths are, everything. Everything you want to know about the silicone, it's in there. The cure temperatures, the cure times, everything. And for the Aquion silicone, I cannot find that information. I sat on my computer for about four hours looking for this information, and I cannot find it. I can't find who actually manufactures it, um, and I can't find any of the technical data for this silicone. Now, it's claiming on the tube that this silicone is used in the manufacturing process for their aquariums, which may or may not be true I can't say one way or the other but if they're not willing to provide the information that's going to show me how strong that silicone is to determine for me what application I can use that silicone in I'm not going to use it because there's no way for me to know if that silicone is any stronger than GE1 and for the $20 price tag I can get four of these for the same price as one of those and this might do a better job. I don't know. I can't guarantee any of that. So I can't recommend it. So that's why I don't use that. You know, aside from the enormous price point on that of $20, if I'm going to spend $20 on silicone, I'm going to get either this or the ASI or the Momentive, uh, the RTV 108s. And I'm going to use one of those because I know what I'm getting when I purchase those as opposed to the Aquion sealant. Um, even though the Aquion sealant is sold at PetSmart, Petco, and the chain stores like that, I don't know what it's capable of. I would rather deal with something that I know what it's capable of. So hopefully that helps you guys uh, with the understanding of resealing and building aquariums as to which one you want to use. Um, generally, if you're just resealing, this is going to work fine, right? I've used this on an, up to 150 gallons, but if you're resealing like 300 gallons, 200 gallons, something like that, get something a little bit stronger. If you're building an aquarium, get the strongest one you can, right? And everything should work out perfectly fine. Um, so that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Um, oh, also one quick thing, merch is in. Link for the merch store is down in the description down below, as well as all the other links that uh, for products that I use on my channel. Links for those are in the description down below as well. Thank you guys for watching Traffish Aquatics, and I will see you guys in the next video.